This is an introduction into the Visual Production Scheduler for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. The VPS, the Visual Production Scheduler, is the drag and drop scheduling front end to the standard manufacturing module of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. In this video, I will demonstrate the VPS with a typical use case how many of our customers work with the product. After that, I will summarize the benefits, the key features, and make some final comments on the availability of the VPS. The use case is the case of a smaller manufacturing company which gets well along with the standard manufacturing capabilities that Business Central offers. The company plans on work center level and each work center has a different capacity. The capacity is rather determined by people and the availability than by machines. Also, the company's master data is far from being perfect and hence scheduling must not be perfect at all, but visual, hands-on and easy. This is also the biggest challenge. All production scheduled data are distributed in multiple business central tables and it is really hard to impossible to understand the schedule at one glance. Although desperately needed, the following questions require a lot of work to get answered without a visual scheduler. What is my current utilization? Where and when do I have free capacities to take new jobs? I will have unplanned downtime tomorrow. What is the effect? So let's have a look how you can answer these questions with the VPS. So this is the visual production scheduler. This is the production order view, which shows all production orders sorted by their status so that we have planned, firm, planned and released. Here my sample data, it's just firm, planned and released. And every of these lines represents one production order. You can double click on the production order and then go to the production order card so that you see all business center information from here, like you're used to it. Like you can drill down on this card into the routings, you can do it here as well. So from the production order, we get to the production order line and from the production order line, we get to the routing line. So here we see when we start working on this line and when we finish it, what's the due that is. And here we see the respective operations of these production orders and when they are scheduled to happen. In the background, you see gray and white. So white is work time, gray is non-work time. This information we take from the shop calendar. And of course, you can drag and drop. So complementary to the um, production order view, we have something that we call the capacity view. So let me switch there now from uh, right mouse click show operation capacity view. And then we go there and you see the one that we came from is highlighted. It's blinking and I can uh, click it again so that I can see the routing again. Here in my example, as I said in the use case, and this is how a lot of customers work uh, with the VPS, is you see that I just have work centers. So these are work centers, preparation, sawing, drilling, milling, welding, assembly, quality control. Um, and every work center has a different capacity. So my prep work center, for example, has a capacity of, um, yeah, has a capacity of three, Whereas, for example, welding has a capacity of four. The capacity information, the capacity utilization can be seen like how these stack up, but also from what we call the histogram. So there's the capacity load chart and that shows me to which degree I'm utilizing the available capacity. And we have this available for all work centers. Right now, this capacity utilization chart, and we see by the way that we have an overload here on that particular day. And right now, um, this, this capacity utilization chart is shown on a daily view. So for example, here on that milling line or on that milling work center, I have a daily capacity of 900 minutes and currently I've loaded it with work worth 1,110 minutes, okay? So this capacity utilization chart is extremely important and extremely valuable and you can change the aggregation so that we see this by second so that you can really see when you have workload uh, overloads and when not. Um, we saw it by day but you also can look at it, for example, by week, so that we give you the uh, overall utilization. Then we see for this week, actually, we have a slight overload, um, but the drastic overload is, is exactly at that day. So 
Complementary to these two views, uh, we also have what we call the histogram view where we see these curves on one chart so that we can immediately see on one glance when we have resource issues or not. So let's schedule a bit and let's go back to the capacity view and let's see actually how we can fix this overload. And by the way, it is a business central um, makes these overloads so they are not necessarily a bad thing and I said in the use case actually the master data here is not that perfect and and you know you can you can say that you as production scale know that you will get both of these jobs done at that day although you seem to have less capacity and then you can leave it just like it is it is no problem if you know you get both of them done then you're fine um, and you can just leave it like this um, and then you get the overload warning because you 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 seem to plan to use more capacity than you have but if you know you get this done because you can run the machine faster no need to change it just leave it like this and the the, the schedule and the vps can cope with these kind of let's say imperfect data but if you want to fix it what you can do is now i can move it to the end of the previous at the end of the other task here and then of course we get the overlap of the next day so this is manual drag and drop scheduling so you've seen that we have the overlap now here and by the way when i move this all the successors on the other machines get moved but now i can like move this a bit and then the next one so that that now this is sorted out here and we use some free capacity over here and you see a lot of things got changed on the other machines and we can quickly check if this caused an overload on one of the downstream work centers but it did not and also nothing turned late if things would have turned late we would see actually a red dot on these operations that we changed um so everything kind of looks like like fine. So we change this, the due date of this is this, and we are still within the due date. So this is where you can do drag and drop scheduling. And if you now notice that you're whatever, um, let's say we have the welding department and we have the welding department overhauls a capacity of four, and this is more or less determined by people. And now I know that for Monday, the 15th of February, I will have, uh, one or two welders less then I actually would do this on the work center card so on the work center card I would go um, to planning and I would create some absence on this date so let's see I would say okay on this what was that somewhere in February on this 15th of February between eight in the morning and let's say three in the or let's say noon um, I would only have two welders available then I would update this first now I made changes to the capacity so as I scheduled this a bit I would save it save my schedule so that the changes that are made become effective and then I would reload the data so that we fetch new information from Business Central and we see now capacity has been become less here on welding on that day but still we have enough available capacity here on that day. So these are a couple of examples what you can do with the VPS and what the VPS uh, gives you as information. There is a lot more functionality, but I think for an introductory video, this is uh, a good overview what you can achieve with the visual production scheduler for Microsoft Dynamic 365 Business Central. Now that you've seen the VPS in action, let's summarize the benefits that you get from working with the visual production scheduler. First, you win transparency and hence gain control. At one glance, you have your production schedule and the utilization of your machine centers and your work centers. This makes bottlenecks, dependencies and problems immediately very tangible, without browsing through a lot of different business central tables. Ultimately, the transparency gives you back the control over your schedule. Second, more control means less firefighting. You will manage the schedule rather than the schedule managing you. Your working mode changes from reaction to action and you actively control both the schedule and your production. 
Third, you make better decisions with more self-confidence. You have a schedule that you understand and hence that you can trust. You can provide customers with more reliable information and you can identify your bottlenecks faster. So let's look at the features which makes these benefits possible. The VPS is built on the basis of the standard Business Central manufacturing module and it provides you with a fully integrated drag and drop scheduling front end to the standard functionality. The biggest feature is that it gives you a picture of your schedule and we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. It comes with a production order Gantt chart that allows drag and drop scheduling. It comes with a resource Gantt chart that allows drag and drop scheduling. You can choose that your drag and drop scheduling also includes the success or predecessor scheduling. The histogram view gives you capacity utilization overview and the VPS provides you with visual alerts so that you can take actions fast. It comes with powerful filtering options and it seamlessly integrates with standard Dynamics 365 Business Central Manufacturing. The VPS is available for all Business Central versions as well as for Dynamics NAV and is available both on-prem and on the Microsoft App Source.